Oh, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the studio. We're getting on a pretty big adventure here. Does it really make a difference what kind of wood your electric guitar is made out of? We got some samples here. We got pine, we got red oak, we got maple, we got ash. Some you see more commonly in acoustic guitars. Some you don't see in guitars really that often. But for example, my Fender P bass is made of ash. Uh, my Les Paul has a maple top. These are supposed to have different types of sounds. And we've seen some experiments that say, well, yes or no, or on acoustic guitars, it makes a difference on electric. It doesn't. We're reaching out to four experts to get to the bottom of this. And it's an adventure. Let's get to it. And who are these four experts? Well, today I'm counting myself as an old school guitar builder from back in the day. For example, that orange guitar that looks yellow in the video for some reason is made out of 250 year old mahogany. It was from a church pew in Pennsylvania that I got on salvage and built a guitar out of. And I'm not actually going to weigh in as to whether I think one wood has a different tone than another wood, but I am a builder, so I will be expert one. Our second expert is an expert in woods. He runs a lumber mill. We went and toured the facility. He walked us through all kinds of stuff. Thomas Derby is going to tell us a few things about the wood itself. Our third expert is David Church. He's an experimental scientist. We walked him through the ideas of how we were going to run the experiment, and we want to make sure it was in keeping with scientific method. So he gave us some great insights how to proceed and make sure that our experiment yields valid data. And our fourth expert is Nicole Anzalone, doctor of audiology, and she's actually invited us down to her lab to do some independent testing at her laboratory facility. That's going to be kind of independent of the main experiment that we run here, but it should yield some very telling data as well. So let's start with our wood expert, Mr. Tom Derby from Salt City Woods. We put a video out of our tour of his lumber mill when we were sourcing the wood for our experiment. I'll link that video below, but let's hear what he has to say. maple, this one's red oak, and then this one's ash. This isn't plain down yet, so this is just rough cut. Uh, white oak is definitely rot resistant. They use it in like locked doors and things have direct contact with water because it doesn't look like the rot. This is ash. And you can notice the grain is very similar in ash than it is to oak as far as uh, you know how it looks. So they actually call ash poor man's oak. Please go check out that whole video if you want to see more about his facility and how we sourced the wood for this experiment. Now, let's get to Dave Church and let's talk about our experiment. And we're going to also show him an experiment that was done in a popular YouTube video and get his feedback on how scientific that test was. This was a video that's done and it's, it's kind of tough to see, but over here you have a guitar bridge and a pickup. There's mm -hmm. six strings here. And here's a nut and six tuners. And the idea okay. that they were capturing here was um, they were talking about how these strings resonated between here and between here. And what they're not mm -hmm. showing you, because you can see there's no neck. There's no, mm -hmm. we don't see any connection from point A, the bridge to point B, the nut. We don't see that. Mm -hmm. However, this shows you, and here's the guitar strings now going away from us. The two tables have been braced with two by fours on the sides. But scientifically, would you look at the results of that experiment as if the experiment was vibrationally isolated between the two attachment points of the string? Could you call that an isolated vibrational experiment? I mean, not, no. 
I wouldn't say I wouldn't have I wouldn't have called that an isolated vibrational experiment. And his right. question was like, what if I eliminate the neck? Does it still sound the same when I strum it? And he did that by separating it into two necks. And and a lot of people go, oh, well, I don't see a neck. And so that's valid. So you basically just said invalid. Yeah, because if you want to if you want to compare necks of a guitar, right? you should have the guitar strings on a neck and then compare it with different woods and with different necks. So like you have a mahogany neck, you have a maple neck, you have a cedar neck, whatever. Four will be exactingly identical in terms of cut point, post point, um, the manner of attachment, which will be wood glue. I mean, it's going to be, in my opinion, um, scientifically, it's going to be better. So by having that DI, uh, you're removing those variables. And, and I, I know you're saying, well, we, we're like, we're keeping these things as constant as possible. That's all great. But like, you know, how constant is constant? Getting, getting something to be completely removed from experiment is really hard. It's better just not to introduce the var variable at all to begin with, you know, with what you have. I mean, it's definitely well thought out. There's a lot of, you, you take into account of a lot of variables. Um, like I said before, I like, the pin, the gravity pick idea, just removing the player sort of from the variable. Um, and I, I also like the DI signal, the DI in, because I think that's going to remove sort of the amp. It's a variable, though it seems like that is also a big part of your experiment. So also having the sort of the feed from the amp as well is good. We're not quite at laboratory quality level science but could I say that I've done everything that I can within my power to make sure that this experiment follows scientific method? Yeah, I mean, you definitely went went through it, right? Like you went through it and tried to figure out how best you can run this experiment. Uh, the question, I know you can't be present, mm -hmm. but assuming that I run the experiment as I've described it, assuming that's the case, question. If you were to look at and listen to the data that I provide at the end of this experiment as a scientist, would you think that any difference in the data from species to species could really potentially be caused by anything other than the species of wood? No, I think that, I think right now, I think the species. Yeah, so let me let me be clear about that. I think with the experiment you're running, I would say if I looked at the data my um my my judgment would be that it is based entirely on the species of the plank of wood i'd like to thank everyone involved today tom derby from salt city woods scientist david church for spending over an hour on a zoom call with me making sure that our science is as valid as we can get it and please stay tuned to this channel we're going to make this a three-part video. Part two is going to have Dr. Nicole Anzalone and the work that we're doing in her audiology lab to test these woods before the experiment that we run here in the studio. Very valuable information. And we have a lot of work to do. Let's get to it.